Every summer, Wisconsin's Lake Michigan beaches draw visitors from across the state and around the world. For many, the lake's beaches and endless views are as beautiful and compelling as a visit to the ocean. But in the last few years, many Lake Michigan beaches have become fouled with piles of rotting algae. It looks like sludge to me, but it, I'm not sure what it is. It might see it a little more inviting to be able to take a dip every once in a while. Yeah, it smells like poop. When it decomposes, the algae gives off a repulsive stench. I thought it smelled like raw sewage. It's pretty dramatic, I thought. Oh, here we can see a bunch of loose stuff washing up on the beach. There's a nice mat of it here. Dr. Harvey Bootsma is working to figure out what's causing the problem and what might be done about it. This is still reasonably green. Once it starts rotting, it turns more into a brown color and uh, kind of looks and smells like cow manure and uh, it can travel pretty far. You can be a mile or two inland and still get a pretty strong, strong smell coming off of the beach. People who live near shore have to shut their windows to avoid the smell. If you were to ask me, if I knew now, what, you know, I would not have built here. I would not have. At its worst, the rotting algae can be several feet thick. The stench is just even worse than what it is for standing up on the pier there. And it's black now because it is all rotted. It makes the same kind of stench as what you'd get from a manure pile. The algae clogs water intake pipes and shuts down power plants. And it might promote the growth of harmful bacteria. What kind of algae is it? The name of the nuisance algae is Cladophora. It's a native species in the Great Lakes. It's part of the natural food web and it provides shelter for small fish and other organisms. Since about 2002, however, its growth has increased dramatically. In mid to late summer, much of it breaks loose and washes ashore. Why is it growing so much? Scientists point to two factors, invasive mussels and phosphorus pollution. The mussels came to the Great Lakes in ocean-going ships. Billions of zebra and quagga mussels now blanket the rocky bottom of western Lake Michigan. Phosphorus fuels plant growth. It enters Lake Michigan in stormwater runoff from farms, cities, and suburbs. The phosphorus comes from soil, leaves, and other organic matter. It's abundant in manure and fertilizers. Some of these sources are many miles from the lake's shores. Together, phosphorus and invasive mussels create a perfect growing environment for Cladophora. What's so powerful about mussels and phosphorus working together? It's the way mussels feed. They filter organic matter and phosphorus out of the water. Each tiny mussel filters a quart of water every day. Just a few mussels in a jar will clear the water in 30 minutes. Clear water lets more sunlight reach the algae. This increased light is by far the biggest reason for the explosive growth of Cladophora. But the mussel's waste also helps Cladophora grow. It's full of the phosphorus carried to the lake in stormwater runoff. Their waste then concentrates that phosphorus near shore in the very same places where Cladophora grows. More light and more phosphorus. Cladophora couldn't have better friends than zebra and quagga mussels. Why don't we get rid of the mussels? There's no practical way to clear Lake Michigan of zebra and quagga mussels. They cover vast areas of the lake bottom. There are far too many to remove physically, 
or to poison with chemicals. And they have no natural predators in the Great Lakes. Zebra and quagga mussels are here to stay. What can we do? We can reduce phosphorus in the lake. That means reducing stormwater runoff and keeping organic matter on the land. That can be done in many ways. Farmers can contain manure and apply only what's needed at optimal times and locations. Cities can build stormwater retention ponds and require that erosion from construction sites be minimized. Homeowners can install rain barrels, build rain gardens, and use phosphorus-free fertilizer. Scientists tell us the key to success is to start now. If we can push phosphorus down a little bit, we could see fairly noticeable changes in the amount of podophora in the lake. Countering the effects of invasive zebra and quagga mussels will require increased efforts by homeowners, farmers, and state and local government. In return, visitors from near and far can again enjoy the clean beaches, stunning views, and rejuvenating power of Wisconsin's Lake Michigan shores. You can learn much more about reducing runoff from your county conservation department, UW Extension Office, and the Department of Natural Resources. Links to these websites and more can be found at www.seagrant.wisc.edu/algae.